a doctor who killed, a mass murdering gynaecologist. Eric Grossman was a prominent healthcare professional in the free city of Danzig who not only worked to save lives, but under the Nazi rulers, he sought to take them. This is his story. Eric Grossman was born here in what was then Danzig on the 30th of January 1902. Today it is Gdansk in northern Poland. It's a vibrant city with a long history. Historically it was ruled either by Poland, either directly or indirectly, or by the Teutonic Knights, Prussia or Germany. For a long period of time it was an independent city. In 1919, as a result of the Treaty of Versailles, which wished to establish a port for the newly independent state of Poland, it once more became an independent city-state. The father of Eric Grossman was a corporal in the Prussian army. After attending school in Gdansk, Grossman studied medicine, receiving a license to practice in 1926. He received a PhD from the University of Würzburg in 1927. He then specialised in the field of hygiene, social medicine and gynaecology in the free city of Danzig. From 1933, Grossman was Deputy Senator for Public Health under Helmut Kluck in Danzig. After Kluck left the Senate in 1937, he succeeded him as Senator for the department then known as Health Care and Population Policy. He also succeeded Kluck as director for the State Academy for Practical Medicine in Danzig, where he had previously held a teaching position in gynaecology. In this context, he also took over his teaching subjects of genetics and racial studies. In 1933, the Nazi party won the parliamentary election in the free city of Gdansk, the only fair national parliamentary election the party ever won outright. Grossman joined the Nazi party, membership number 720199. The main aim of the Nazi party in Danzig was to integrate the city into the German Reich. The party formed its own paramilitary association called the SS Heimwehr Danzig. I have a video on this organisation on this channel, should you be interested. In the context of his work for the National Socialist Party, he was awarded the Golden Party Badge of the Nazi Party by Adolf Hitler on the 20th of April 1939, Hitler's 50th birthday. The first shots of World War II were fired in the territory of the free city of Danzig in the hamlet of Simonsdorf. A couple of hours later, the warship Schleswig-Holstein opened fire on the small Polish weapons unloading facility at Westerplatte and thus began the Second World War. Danzig was captured by the Nazis after a battle lasting many hours in the post office building. Danzig was absorbed into the Reich and became part of the new administrative area of Reichsgau Danzig West Prussia. Grossman headed the Department of Health and Public Care in the newly formed Reichsgau Danzig West Prussia, directly subordinate to the authority of Reich Governor Albert Foster in Danzig. As a medical man, Grossman was keen to ensure that Polish war wounded were treated in Gdansk clinics. He saw them as brave opponents. The racial policy of the National Socialists also wanted to deport Poles from the region to the central parts of Poland. Grossman vigorously opposed the resettlement of Kashubians who were earmarked for deportation from Danzig, West Prussia. The Kashubians are an ethnic group found to the west of the Gdansk region who speak a language very similar to that of Polish. However, this generosity in non-deportation did not apply to others. 
Grossman was the personal physician of Albert Foster. This probably led him to being appointed to lead the Racial Policy Office. In 1933, the National Socialist German Medical Association had founded the Enlightenment Office for Population Policy and Racial Care. This office was placed under the command of the Deputy Führer, Rudolf Hess, the following year. It was then renamed the Racial Policy Office of the NSDAP and employed 25 people. The function of the office was in racial hygiene. That is to say that races should not mix. It produced a number of leaflets, its own newspaper, Neues Volk, and a calendar with the same name and in cooperation with the Reich Propaganda Ministry, several films were also made on this subject. The organisation went along with the T4 programme to murder those who were physically and mentally challenged. This is the forest that Piesnitsa, then called Piasnitz, north of Vejerovo, then Neustadt. With the battle still going on further south in Poland, in September 1939, Grossman headed a commission in the psychiatric and nursing home at Świeci nad Wisłą in Polish territory, occupied on the 3rd of September 1939. Here the doctors working there were to use selection lists to record all patients who were Jewish, had convictions or were unfit so that they could be transferred out to use the language of the time. From the 10th of September 1939, the inmates of this hospital were given sedatives and then driven out and shot in previously prepared graves by a nearby lake. Around 1,000 inmates were shot dead near the Lushkovo estate by the SS and local Nazi volunteers, the Volksdeutsche Selbstschutz. The shootings took place over a period of one week. One of the Germans, named G. Kutsch from Terezpol, testified that teachers from the nearby towns also died in Lushkov. Three of the names of the murderers are known, Holhofer, Kern, and Paisler. In 1944, Nazi Sonderkommandos dug up the bodies and burned them at an unknown location. The exhumation carried out after the war uh, was unable to identify the names of the murdered patients from the National Psychiatric Institute in Schwerci. Piotr Glazinski, born in 1882, a resident of Luskov, testified after the war about mass executions that took place there. Here is his testimony. Before the war, I was employed as a steward on a farm in Luskov. After the Germans entered Poland, it was in September 1939 when I was digging potatoes with people, and around two in the afternoon I saw a taxi driving towards the lake. Behind the taxi was a large bus containing women, men and children. After about half an hour... When the bus had gone down to the lake, gunshots were heard. I also heard screaming and shouting amongst people, but I cannot say what was done to the people because I was too far away and the bus was near the lake. I couldn't see it. I would like to mention that at noon on the same day, workers were digging a large hole on the orders of the German ordner of this estate. In June 1944, I know that Germans arrived in large cars with soldiers uh, they came to the lake where the grave was located. I can't say exactly what they did because it was surrounded by soldiers. Yusuf Vishkutsky from Lushkov also testified about the murders at the lake in Lushkov. When I was at the Lushkov estate, I noticed two large buses full of people, German civilians and military men standing next to them. The buses could fit about a 100 people. When I approached the buses, civilians with guns turned me away, saying that I was not allowed to pass here. I also noticed a large group of people coming from the direction of Loshkovaka. After two hours, I heard shooting with handguns, which lasted for about an hour. At that time, I heard cries for help in Polish. In June 1944, two large buses arrived with shovels and pickaxes attached to the side. Based on further testimony from Yusuf Wichutsky, we know that the army tightly surrounded the entire area and did not allow residents to approach the lake. Exhumations were carried out for two days, day and night. After the buses left, Yusuf Wichutsky went to the lake and found that the freshly filled grave had fallen by about half a metre. This is Piesnica Vielka, where thousands more people were shot 
over the following weeks, the victims mainly coming from the German Reich and Polish Pomerania. On the 19th of September 1939, Heinrich Himmler promoted Grossmann to Oberführer der Allgemeine SS, SS number 277786. Grossman became rector and then director of the Danzig Medical Academy in 1940. An institute for heredity and racial research was located here. From 1941 to 1945, he held the chair for eugenics. In March 1945, with the Red Army knocking at the door, Grossman fled to the Hell Peninsula, from where he was evacuated by sea to Schleswig-Holstein, which was in the British zone, of occupation. He was taken prisoner here and put in the Fischbeck internment camp. He was later moved to the camp at Erbke. The Polish government learned of his whereabouts and applied for his extradition. In order to avoid a likely death sentence, Grossman committed suicide on the 14th of December 1948 in the Erbke internment camp. Hope you found this interesting. I've got lots more videos relating to the Second World War, to Nazi crimes in Poland and to the region of Gdansk in particular. So if you're interested in this type of thing, you might want to subscribe. I upload every Friday at 20 hundred hours, but sometimes I upload videos at other times as well. I try to be present for the premieres. So if you wish to chat with me and other viewers, then you may want to subscribe and ring the bell. But for the moment, thanks for listening.